Are you looking to play Rogue, the one-shot king in Wrath of the Lich King? Then you've come to the right place. In this video, we're going to cover the best race, talents, gear, glyphs, profession, and of course, macros for PvP in Season 5. And just so you know, this guide just gets you started. If you truly want to get a ton of ratings stupidly fast in Wrath, then you need to check out our premium courses over at Skillcapped after this video. With specialized guides at your fingertips from rank 1 players, we teach you how to master your class by showing you how to top damage, master your CC, and teaching you how to become a live lord. While everyone else is trying to slowly figure everything out themselves, you can jumpstart the process with Skillcapped, quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so in fact that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. Join us today, link in the description below. Anyway, let's get into the guide, starting off with the best race on both the Horde and Alliance. For the Alliance, you'll want to play either Night Elf or Human. Both are fine, but we think Night Elf has a slight edge in Season 5. Night Elf gives you an extra Vanish in the form of Shadow Meld, which you generally use to peel since this allows you to save Vanish for a sticky situation where you need it defensively. You also gain access to Quickness, which synergizes perfectly with Heightened Senses, which results in the 5% standard hit cap not applying to you. The hit cap versus a Night Elf Rogue is actually 11%, which is pretty crazy. That means that spells like Blind can miss since most players are itemizing for 5% hit, meaning you'll have a slight advantage. Human is less utility than Night Elf, but gives you more damage. That's due to Will to Survive, which allows you to not run a PvP trinket, and thus wear two PvE trinkets at once. This may sound like it's OP, but the thing is, damage is in fact already high enough to get kills that Night Elf with the added utility ends up being the better option. However, in later patches where PvE trinkets are absolutely busted, Human takes the reign as the better race. For the Horde, you'll want to be playing Orc. Hardiness is amazing in so many matchups. It allows you to avoid kidney shot into sap, as well as survive deep freeze shatters easily. It makes you much more durable. You also gain access to Blood Fury, which acts as an on-use damage amplifier that is off the global, which means you'll want to macro this into your Shadow Dance. Now it's time to go over talents, which can be a bit confusing, so let's break it down. What you see on screen is the best talent setup. We're going to go over the most noteworthy talents, starting off with Master of Subtlety, which we only want one point in. The reason for this is that the talent scales weirdly, where the first point gives 4% and the rest only adds 3%. We want one point in Camouflage too. Since the combat timer is dynamic between 5.6 and 7 seconds, having more than one point in Camouflage causes the CD of Stealth to be too low for it to be worth it. That's because having stealth be a lower CD than the combat timer itself doesn't do anything. Heightened Senses is amazing for a couple of reasons. We'll lose the sap battle against other rogues without it, making it mandatory for mirror matchups. Additionally, it causes the standard hit cap to not apply to you, meaning spells like Blind can miss on you. Cheat Death allows you to buy some extra time so you can use Vanish or Cloak of Shadows after the stun on you fades, making it a super strong defensive. It's important to note though that in Season 5, Resilience is super low, and since Cheat Death damage reduction scales off Resilience, it isn't super reliable. One of the most iconic rogue abilities, Shadow Step, is super important and can be used in a variety of different ways. You can use it to hit a kidney shot through evasion, since you can't dodge from behind, or simply use it for its damage increase for a big eviscerate. It's one of the most flexible abilities in the game. The reduced cost on Cheap Shot and Garrett from Dirty Deeds allows you to use Shadow Dance to peel. Without it, Cheap Shot and Garrett is simply too expensive to spam on everyone on the enemy team. The Execute Like effect can be comboed with Shadow Step for huge eviscerates too. Amazing talent. Now, although rogues have access to Crippling Poison, Waylay is still absolutely insane. Since Paladins have Poison to spell, this talent effectively forces them to use Hand of Freedom if they want to kite you. Additionally, the attack speed reduction is super strong into Warriors, since Warriors rely on Auto Swings to generate a lot of their fury. In Wrath, you kinda wanna just spam backstab as much as possible. This is all thanks to puncturing wounds, causing most of your backstabs to crit. This is great for two reasons. Firstly, it obviously does more damage, but secondly, and more importantly, it synergizes with Honor Among Thieves, which gives you additional combo points when critting. And of course, Shadow Dance, one of the most iconic rogue spells. This ability is your biggest burst, and with it, you're able to 100-0 most classes in a stun. It can also be used as a peel by spamming Cheap Shot and Garrett on everything, or sap off CC like Blind and Psychic Scream. Next up in Wrath, there are tons of glyphs to choose from, making it a bit overwhelming. So let's just jump right in, covering the absolute best glyphs for PvP. 
Starting off with Glyph of Shadow Dance, making your Shadow Dance be 8 seconds long. In Wrath of the Lich King, Shadow Dance duration is only 6 seconds, which means you have very limited globals to press during your Shadow Dance. So if you want to do things like sap off of fear or do damage while weaving in saps between globals, you'll need this Glyph to give you a bigger window to do damage and CC. Glyph of Preparation is amazing in Season 5 due to how bursty it is. Having two interrupts and two dismantles allows you to reduce your opponent's damage as well as continue your pressure. Being able to kick, prep, kick is insane for killing healers during your setups since healers in Wrath rely more on hard casting to heal, which makes interrupts much more valuable. Glyph of Gouge or Glyph of Sprint are both good for your last major slot and kind of come down to preference. Simply put, Glyph of Gouge reduces the energy cost of one of your major abilities, which indirectly increases your damage and gives you more globals, seeing as energy can be difficult to manage. Now, for Glyph of Sprint, you might think it's kind of useless. I mean, 30%? Surely Sprint is fast enough as it is, right? Well. Seeing as the strongest slows in the game are 70%, having sprint be higher than that means that even with the strongest slows in the game, you'll still be running fast. This means that this glyph is especially strong into casters. It's important to note that in Season 5, casters aren't really that strong, making Glyph of Gouge, in our expert's opinion, much better. For the minor glyphs, it's all preference, however. Glyph of Distract is pretty noteworthy, seeing as you're going to be using this ability a ton to stop drinks where the extra range is going to be really valuable. Next up, we're going to cover gear, but before we do, if you want to see the rest of our Rogue series, it is available only at skillcap.com. There you can access our premium damage and playstyle courses, which were designed by expert Wrath of the Lich King players. And if that wasn't enough, we even offer site-exclusive arena commentaries where you can get detailed matchup strategies to start playing just like a pro. And with a rating game guarantee, you have nothing to lose, so check out skillcap.com today. Next up, gear is the stepping stone in your character's power, so knowing which pieces you want to aim for is incredibly important. We want to start off with going over your stat priority. The priority is as follows, 5% hit, followed by 650 resilience, followed by attack power, followed by crit. The soft hit cap is 5% so that you don't miss key abilities like blind. It's a soft cap since the default chance to miss is 5%, which can be increased by things like Night Elf Racial. Since cheat death damage reduction scales off resilience, you want to get to a point where you can survive setups by simply relying on your cheat death. In Season 5, 650 resilience seems to be the sweet spot. For your gems, starting off with the meta slot, you want to run the stun reduction gem. This makes it so you can't get sapped off kidney shot, as well as making it harder for you to die in stuns, which is the only time you're going to be vulnerable. For reds, you want to use attack power and resil splits until you hit the resil soft cap, followed by straight attack power reds. For blues, you just want to use one all stat gem to meet the requirements of your meta gem, and otherwise use full AP reds in your blue slots. And finally for yellows, you want to hit gems till hit cap, followed by resilience. And now onto the gears lists, starting off with the pre-biz set. What you see here on screen is all things that can be acquired before the arena season starts. Everything is either BOEF that you can buy from the auction house, dungeon gear from normal and heroics, or just honor gear that is easily grindable. Band of the Kirin Tour can simply be purchased for 6,800 to 8,500 gold, depending on your reputation with the Kirin Tour faction, which may sound like a lot, but due to how expensive everything is on launch, you should be able to farm the gold pretty quickly. Weakness Spectralizers come from the engineering profession and as an insanely high stat budget. If you don't have the budget for engineering or decide to level a different profession, then the Savage Gladiator's Helmet is the best alternative. For non-humans, you want to just replace Anvil of Titans with a PvP medallion. The Anvil has an incredibly low proc chance, making it much worse than the Dark Moon card. For the actual full BIS set, you're looking at getting a ton of gear from PvE. This makes rogues hard to fully gear. It is a double-edged sword though, seeing as when you're playing a class who benefits greatly from PvE, then you'll be able to be insanely geared early on in the season if you have the luck. The rest of your gear comes from PvP. Moving along, professions in Wrath play a huge part in your character's power level. Even though you're probably gonna have to empty your wallet filled with gold, we recommend to get your hands on jewel crafting and engineering. Jewel crafting gives you the highest stat boost compared to the other options in Season 5, which comes in the form of amplified gems that you could only have three of. This is huge since normal epic gems aren't available until Season 7, making the stat difference between the normal gems and the jewel crafting exclusives that much bigger. Engineering is the most important one of the two though. This is because of the hand-mounted pyro rocket glove enchant, which acts as an additional 2-3k to k damage off the GCD on every single one of your shadow dances. This is especially good in Season 5 due to the fact that it 
it doesn't scale off anything. The damage is static, so it's obviously going to be the strongest in the arena season where players' HP pools are the lowest. Macros are a fundamental part of setting up your character, so let's break it down. We recommend you get your hands on a sap macro, which essentially allows you to instantly sap enemies' stealthies as soon as you see them. Without this macro, that would literally be impossible. When you're going for re-stealth, it's important you stop auto-attacking, which this macro does for you. Additionally, by adding an exclamation mark in the cast stealth sequence, you'll be able to spam this macro without canceling stealth accidentally. Now for the more simpler macros, we recommend that you get your hands on the standard Focus Blind, Kick, Shadow Step, Dismantle, Shiv, Gouge, and Sap macros. These macros are something every player on every class uses for their CC abilities. They allow you to control your focus target while dealing damage to your main target. However, in order to speed up the process of Shadow Step kicking, having a separate macro to use them simultaneously on your focus is important. Using one can be a bit keybind intensive, so if you're finding yourself struggling to find room for this one, don't sweat it. It's necessary to have a macro for tricks of the trade, since manually targeting your teammate while doing damage is clunky. We recommend you simply put your DPS partner's name in the macro. But if you're ready to up your game, then you should pick up the Arena 1-2-3 Blind, Kick, and Dismantle macros. With these, you're able to control all the players in the arena seamlessly with your blinds and kicks without having to lose any damage onto your main target. Finally, you have a super advanced macro in fighting enemy rogues that instantly uses pre-med, shadow step, and cheap shot on them if they open your healer. This is extremely important and a part of the Wrath meta. This is because what rogues like to do in RMP mirrors, for instance, is cheap shot your healer, followed by a vanish so you can't prevent the kidney shot. The counter to this strategy, though, is this macro. If you spam it, you'll land your cheap shot on the enemy rogue before they have a chance to vanish. Let us know your plans for Wrath of the Lich King. Will you be playing Rogue? Let us know in the comments below. And of course, check out Skillcapped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you'll climb at least 400 plus rating when actively using our service. And if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.